Hello and welcome. This is Fireworks. In today's edition, we're continuing our series on the race to occupy the plum job at the Green Chamber of the National Assembly. This time, we're weighing the ruling party's announcement to zone key offices with uh, the interest of a key contender from Nigeria's southeast. Welcome to your preferred hard talk interview program on TBC. Let's take a moment. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying tuned. Today, my guest is Honorable Inkiruka Onyojiocha, representing Isikwato Umunuchi from Abia State. Thank you Thank for you. your time. Um, you are in the race to occupy the plum job at the Green Chamber. What are you bringing to the table? Well, thank you for the question. Number one thing I'll, have, I'll bring to the table is uh, competence, ability to deliver, having a house that will be very robust, having a house that will be accessible to the Nigerian people, having a house that will be proactive, even in terms of uh, budgetary processes. Because I think differently that instead of people just sitting down in their offices, and ministries and just uh, bringing budgets to National Assembly. I will engage the executive to work with National Assembly from day one so that when they bring their budget to the National Assembly, it's not going to be like we are going to go over it again because we have to be part of the process. And remember, we are representing 360 constituencies. And most of the ministers that you see are not at home to see a lot of things. And so that's why every budgetary process, you see us going back and forth with them because we are the representatives of the people. And so we know exactly what's going on. And so that is one of the top um, agenda that I want to, the, one of the changes I have to bring to the table. And apart from that, I will build on the successes of past uh, leadership. They've done well. I was a member of, of Sixth Assembly. Of course, we delivered. Seventh Assembly, we delivered. Eighth Assembly, we are in now. We have delivered and we are delivering. And so it's just to consolidate on the independence of legislature, to consolidate on the delivery of representation to Nigerian people. Evidently, you speak with experience and uh if we were to weigh that with what other people uh, are saying about your declaration uh, to enter the race, uh, they dismiss your interest as, uh, you know, you being one of the pretenders with a shrug, and thereby they say that you stand no chance. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> it's very, very wrong for anybody to say that. If you know me very well, I don't go um, shopping for things that I don't even want to do. And I'm not a pretender in all sense of uh, responsibility and humility. Nobody will look at me and think I'm pretending. Pretending to be a, a, a speaker of House of Representatives. Pretend, pre pretense in terms of the fact that you know that you're not going to win. Why won't you I win? I won't, listen, let me tell you something that people are missing here. I'm not in politics by accident. I was a commissioner. I was a local government chairman. And a fourth term member of House of Representatives. In 2011, I didn't contest for speakership. 2015, I didn't contest. And as a fourth term member, I am contesting as people are saying, oh, I know I won't win. Why won't I win? We are talking about members of representatives. We are talking about 360 members, including me, who are members and we are colleagues. I've chaired a committee that is very sensitive, aviation committee. And I held it for eight years running. I'm still, member, I'm still a, a, chairman, uh, a chairman of House Committee on Aviation. I've held several um, public hearings. During Dana report, Nigeria knew me. I stood my ground and all those things. And so how will anybody say, because I know I wouldn't win? I am running because I know I win. And how will I win? I'm going to, I have started engaging my members, my colleagues, who are members of the, and um, who are going to be members of Ninth Assembly. Of course, you know that the inauguration will stay coming in June. And what is it? I went to the same school like the men. I know, so I have never gone to anything that I've not, I've not lost anything in life. And so why would I lose this? 
And so it, it takes me aback when people think, oh, because you're a woman, you're not going to win. Or because you're coming from Southeast that you don't have number. Listen, I'm a Nigerian. I'm qualified to run. And I know that my colleagues will see the competency in what I've done before. And they will be also know that I'm not coming here to be anybody's stooge. And I'm not coming to mess around with the job. I deliver and I'm a hard worker. I mean, I, I think what uh, we should be looking at now is if we are going to move the country forward, why don't we look at people who have experience? I'm not saying the other people that have been here don't have experience, but I've, have, I've had this executive experience. I was a commissioner, mind you. I was a local government chairman. I'm a grassrooter. Of course, I, 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 I'm sure you know that I was in PDP before. Yes. And I contested under the platform of F APC. If I'm not a serious person that no one win, of course everybody thought I wouldn't win when I, I, I moved to APC. We'll talk yeah. about that in yeah, the so in, in he, 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 And that's the same thing. People think, oh, you are not going to win. They write you off before you start. I'm not somebody that you can write off because the truth of the matter is that promotion does not come from the East, West, South or not. It comes from God. And so one with God is majority. And I believe that I am running for speakership of Ninth, uh, of Ninth Assembly with the intention that I will win. So let us not go there. Okay, so you're so confident. You have the numbers. You, you will win. But your party has zoned it to the Southwest. Are you going to go against your party? Politics is about loyalty. Nigerian uh, politics, by the way. Oh, yes. And I believe in uh, loyalty to the party 100%. And that's why I said that the party should have everything of the zoning that they've just done. Because I also believe that vice president is from the Southwest. Principle of first federal character. My party, all of them, they are law-abiding citizens. And I'm sure they are not going to jettison the Constitution. If you know your Constitution very well, it is about justice according to law. There is still time for my party to have everything. Because the truth of the matter is that my uh, party knows that the vice president is from Southwest. They already, already have a position. What happens to Southeast? What happens to North Central? Check it. The president is from North um, West. And so Southwest have the vice president. You have four other positions that is left, which is Senior President, Deputy Senate President, Speaker, Deputy Speaker. And we have six geopolitical zones. If they say zone to Southeast, people from Southeast will contest. It's not going to be zone to Kiro in Georgia. I'm not the only member from Southeast. I will canvas for support. But your party will come back to ask you that what has the Southeast contributed to the gains there of you the whole progressive again. Congress there, there in you this go again. There you go just again. concluded election? There you go again. As a matter of fact, you have less anyway, let me, members let, returning from the Southeast let, let in me this tell election. You something. So what let has me, the Southeast contributed? Let me tell you something. Let us start this way. Once somebody wins an election, you're talking about governance. It's not politics. You can't play politics with governance of the country. We have gone beyond politicking. And the truth of the matter is that my, my party knows very well that it is in their own interest to strengthen all the zones to remain in, the pa in, to remain in power for the next couple of years to come. If you shut out a zone, and talking about politics, it's too early to talk about 2023, I, I believe that. And then sometime maybe in 2023 you want to get votes. Haba. The president needs every zone to work, to deliver on his promises. And mind you, the president said immediately after he was declared that he was going to run an all-inclusive government. Campaigners. Including, listen, including accommodating the women. 
I'm not even coming to the issue of women. We're not even talking not, about women. We're not even talking, talking about, about the, how I'm, politics I'm just telling of this you, race. I'm not even talking about if we open the chapter of women. It's a different ball game. Entirely. You understand? But the truth of the matter here is that the party needs all the zones to help the president to deliver on his promises. But campaigners for this party, Honorable, would also remind you that in the seventh assembly now, the vice president was from the northwest and the speaker was also from the northwest. Let me tell you. So they would pick let me, holes let me, let me just, at your agitation. Let me pick a hole from that. It was out of issues of protest. You know when you protest, Okay, that's why people are con uh, contesting. Some people are contesting from northeast because they are protesting. If the party gets it right, I tell you, I bet you they won't contest. It's because when people protest, then we we'll, we'll defy norms. I'm a very loyal person, okay, and so I am loyal to the party, and that is why I'm telling the party that you're you're treading on dangerous path. We are valuable. To give you support. Your party could see Do, this comment as insubordination. If you it, they can't. The conversation is on. You don't shut out conversation at any point. Because as far as people are alive, the conversation will still be on. The Honorable Betara is contesting. And he's from Bruno State. Because he felt that what they have done is not right. That if you're going to give somebody who has vice president a speaker, that he can have vice president, that he can have uh, senior president, and still have speaker. And if you're talking about votes, South East improved from 2015 to 2019. That's Tell why us we how have. That happened. Of course, when I joined the APC, all the structure that belongs to me joined the APC. Because it's about people, it's about movement. Okay? And we but there are less honorable members returning from you the start southeast. Process this time. By one, this APC did not get all the votes one day. Mind you, Buhari contested before. You understand? He didn't win because he didn't have enough numbers. Basically speaking, he contested again, and people keyed into him, and they did coalition, and he won. You understand what I'm saying? And so the thing is not static that, okay, because I joined APC or because APC did not, uh, that is, did not do well in 2015. Uh, so in 2019, we're not going to do well. We are progressing. And that's why we are saying, if APC, like the president have promised, that is going to run all-inclusive government, give South East, uh, East, South East a chance. Let them be part of governance of Nigeria. Once somebody wins election, your governor, you are, uh, like I'm an honorable member. I represent everybody, even the people that did not vote me. When I bring projects, I bring it to people, to the world. It doesn't matter whether I lost in that world. Ask them. It doesn't matter to me. Because once you win an election, you are holding trust of the people. My president, President Buhari, is holding trust of Nigerian people. It's not just holding trust of APC. He's a good man. And I know that under normal circumstance, the Buhari I know will not tell them, forget about two zones. Your colleagues, some from the Southeast who are in the PDP, are also working together to spring a surprise that will pull the rug from the ambition of the Baja group. And you are so confident about having the number. The truth of the matter is that we've seen it before. Parties should go back to drawing board and do the rightful zoning based on federal character principle. And if you ask me where I get my votes, of course I get my votes from my colleagues. My colleagues will vote me. Well, what what numbers can you boast of out of 360? I could or get 300. I could get 300. Yeah, that's confident. Oh, yes. Why not? I'm a Are Niger you that influential? I am a, oh, is it about influential? Is that about when the chips are down? When Can you get when, the support of when, Speaker Dogara, who is outgoing, who is believed to be very influential? The truth of the matter is that Speaker Dogara is a member of House of Reps. And all of us who sought his, who seek um, for his support. Okay? We, and I will see, if you are an honorable member, after this interview, I will seek your support. So the votes can turn at any point. It's about conviction. It's about seeing between the thin lines. It's about seeing what 
this will bring to the Nigerian people is about what the gains of these people running of Nkiroye Jota's uh, speakership, the gain it will bring to the country. It's about the gains it will bring to the FPC. It's about the face that it will give the government of the day to say, in my own government, I gave a chance to a woman who is qualified, who is a former member of House of Representatives, who has been so uh, uh, competent. As a lawmaker, I am fulfilled because I sponsored very critical bills that have touched the lives of the people. And let me tell you one of it, gun, uh, uh, compulsory treatment of gunshot wounds. You know, a lot of people have been dying. I am the person who sponsored that bill. And this president ascended it. It's law today. I also sponsored anti-torture bill that will push our security agencies to work 24 hours to do investigation before arrest. This president assented to it. I sponsored senior citizen uh, bill. This president ascended to it. So what are we talking about? And somebody say, oh, they just uh, laughed over it. Oh, uh, she won't win. How? Party has made up its mind. Oh, my God. Listen, when people make up their mind and they say you will not contest election and they give somebody ticket and they don't give you ticket, you go to the, uh, uh, to the field and you win because you know the people. Uh -huh. All right, Honorable Yudiocha, hard-hitting arguments there. If I were a lawmaker, perhaps you would have uh, uh, brought me over to your side. She boasts of 300 votes. Let's see how that turns out. You're watching fireworks. My guest is Honorable Inkiruka. Why Oyo not Jiocha, even 359? <laughs> representing <laughs> uh, Isikwato Umunu, Chief Federal Constituency of Abia State. Let's take a moment. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you for staying tuned to Fireworks. If you've just joined us, my guest today is Honorable Inkiruka Onyo Jocha, representing Isikwato Umunuchi, Federal Constituency of Abia State. She's in the race for the plum job of the lower chamber of the National Assembly. And we've been looking at the odds and ends uh, that could affect uh, her you know, getting the top job at the lower chamber. Let's make progress now. You talked a lot about your loyalty uh, to the party. Uh, during the first half of our discussion. Speaking of which, Honorable, why did you dump the PDP for the APC? Well, for me, it's, uh, it's convenient for me to come to APC to run for election because, number one, I want, I want the, my people to connect to the national grid. Like, APC is ruling, it's a ruling party, and the uh, APC has not been doing well in Southeast. And why, 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 why are we uh, talking about us being neglected, marginalized? So the best way to do is to meet them there, be part of them, and then push for your case. Really? That, that's why, yes. That's the only reason. Oh, yes. But there are reports that there were pressures on you to uh, stay back and allow others to contest, having spent the truth more of than the matter two is, terms it is the same the constitution that says there is no tenure for any legislator. You understand? You keep coming back as long as your people re-elect you. You would rather not have uh, other people the, the, have a piece of the, the cake. Th no, the, the point is this. You understand? If my people do not want me, you understand? So they won't vote me. Like you're saying, how, how many numbers will I, will, will I, uh, do I have in my kitty to run? Like I'm going to campaign. When you go to campaign, you campaign to everybody. Somebody might change of his mind, say, okay, I'll carry your cross. I'll take you around and then swear the votes. I mean, so the insinuation oh, that you're not going to allow people to uh, get bite of the cake or something wouldn't apply every time. At every point, even when I, I was running for sec first, time, first tenure, I ran with people. In my primary, I contested with over 10 people. Okay? So at every point you're running, why, why did people contest with me that time? They, should, they would have given me. But you've done the three point, terms. Listen, so listen, four, listen, listen, time. listen. You should be magnanimous enough oh, yes, to have let let someone else, bookie, you know, listen. come into the They are doing second tenure, my own second tenure, when I was running. People ran. They didn't say, okay, you're going to do second term and then you hand over to us. Nobody hands over power to anybody. You have to take it. And the truth of the matter about legislature is that 
or uh, for really, it's, the, it's, it's just survival of the fittest. It's no, it's about the people. Even people when they say they rig or anybody, you can't rig where people do not want you. You will have platform now. People would have voted. If there's no vote, there won't be anything like rigging. You know, and so the truth, of, the bottom line here is my people want me to be re-elected. But the choice of moving to APC is simple. That you can't sit back home and complain about a government marginalizing you when you're not part of the government. Because how will the government know that you're being marginalized? So it's better you join them, go get into the place, sit on the round table and discuss issues about your people. You can't treat any matter in isolation. If you talk about, oh, I, I've not gotten this, I've not gotten this, I should see you now before I give you. If I don't, assuming I don't even know that he's a sick, that there's any problem. And so that's just it. And that's what is playing out. Mm. And that's yeah. why, and, and let me tell you, even Southeast, Southeast, a lot of people from Southeast are IPC. You understand? So even when they come up with some results, you know, APC has structure in every ward in Southeast. Uh, the reports also suggest that um, you turn down an automatic uh, ticket offered by the PDP to <laughs> join the APC. That's some guts. But let's leave that. Still you on have this to loyalty. Leave, you, you have still to on leave this loyalty it. I'm a very matter, loyal person. Still on this loyalty oh, yeah. matter. The report suggests that uh, some people. Uh, began working against your interests and you fell out of favor with your governor because you worked um, with uh, Uche Oga who contested the election victory of um, Governor Ikpazu. So that's, that's all, a question about all, your loyalty. All those things are just frame up stories. And what I said before... So did before, you or did you not work what, with um, what I Uche said, Oga? The, what you have to understand, even journalists, you have to do a background check. Who is working against who? I am a member of House of Representatives, and I'm representing Isukwa Tumunoj Federal Constituency, and the Uchoga is one of my constituents. Okay? And so, I do not know what it means that somebody worked against, with I, with my people delivered Iqbazo. But person. what is your relationship with your governor right now, if you did not work with uh, Uchoga? Uchoga you are talking about is from Abia State. Is Uchoga, uh, does Uchoga have problem with OKZ Bazo? Apart from that Uchoga uh, vied to contest to be governor of Abia State, which is not, it was not only Uchoga that contested. Oh, let's say he contested. Okay. I'm asking about your relationship with your governor. Are you in the, good terms with your governor? My, I don't have any issues. Party with, differences apart. I don't have any issues with my governor because he's my governor. And my Bible says, pray for people in authority. Every day I pray for my governor to succeed. That's simplistic. So that, so that he will bring walk into the governor's of office in Abia State uh, and, and get a favor from your governor right now. It depends on what you mean by favor. If I want to go to my governor today, I can. I'm a member of House of Representatives. My office gives me access to my governor. Now, still on um, the Southeast politics, in relation to your race uh, uh, at the National Assembly, one of the arguments against the Southeast is the inability of political leaders to speak with one voice. While your colleagues are gearing up to do the party's bidding, you are vying for the position of speaker. Don't forget that majority of your colleagues are still in the PDP. So um, there's this. A, a I do bit of not a know. Uh, are listen, listen, I will. Listen, listen, listen. United. I am contesting. You. In I am support of the Southeast I agitation. am contesting. I am contesting for position of speakership. Not in doubt. Listen, and w the only way I will win is by people's vote. Well, the Southeast agitation is at the heart of the matter. And I quote you again, you talk about the federal character principle. L listen, so are Luki, I Southeast it, lowmakers at the I, lower chamber I've, queuing behind you I've, to I've, give strength to it's, this agitation? It's natural. It's natural. Very, very natural. I need a yes to that uh, question. A of yes answer. Of course, yes. They are queuing behind you. Because apart from them queuing behind me, this thing is not about one petty clique trying to make noise or trying to, to be hard. It's not about being hard. If it's about being hard, there are so many other issues that I would have lent my voice so that I would be hard. 
this is about serious issues it's about somebody who wants to represent the people it's about somebody who wants to bring something to the table it's about somebody who wants to write a lot of wrongs you know the ethe story women are competent in the several several uh, for us and I'm, i believe that men should just take it easy with us let us bring our expertise to the table so the women agitation now let's go to that is the ninth assembly right for a woman speaker yes let a woman speak okay so drum the agitation let's, let's hear it let's let the uh, uh are the men do you think the men are ready to defer it's not about the men being the ready let me, tell, let me tell you that's like when people are talking okay you have a lot of challenges you're a woman i say my strength is on the fact that i'm a woman that's my strength number one i am a woman i'm a mother and a mother cares and night assembly will need a mother to care and if the men are not and they should be matured enough to have a woman speak because the truth of the bottom line is that we are moving to the next level and next level is to have a speaker uh, a woman speaker in ninth assembly okay as we coast home I, I i want you to speak more about the southeast and the desire for it to begin to speak with one voice we see the division of the southeast in the just concluded 2019 election we see we saw it in Imo state in the outcome of the election where um, the, the governor uh, was splitting between his son-in-law's party and uh, his own uh, party, the All Progressives Congress. And you know the state uh, eventually went to the PDP. We, we saw it in the support for the uh, opposition candidate, uh, Atiku Abubakar. We saw it in Ohanez and Digo. When will the Southwest, Southeast, begin to speak with one voice? The, 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 this question, is for everybody. It's not just about Southeast. Thank you very much, Honorable. God bless you. Thank you for having me. Thank yes. you. Thank you. And, and you have to tell your your uh, your member elect to vote for me. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make an exception this time as a journalist because I'm a woman as well. That's our offering on fireworks today. We thank you for being there. Of course, it goes without saying. You're up close with the agitation of Honorable Inkiruka Onyo Giocha from uh, Abia State. Isikwato Umunochi Federal Constituency, to be precise. Will a woman be the Speaker of the Ninth Assembly? Uh, the coming weeks, uh, maybe a, a month and two weeks, will decide if that will uh, be a reality. Join us again same time next week when we bring you another interesting edition of the program. I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. Bye for now. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I appreciate it.